Today's video, we're going to look at 12 decks of the um, the four factions other than Nilfgaard, one for each faction leader. Next video, I'll cover Nilfgaard when I have a little bit more experience with them. I've been really busy these last two days. I've only had a few hours with the patch. Some of you guys have had a lot of time, and you guys can put that experience in the comments when you found something really interesting that you want to share with the rest of us. Right now, I'm going to talk about what I've learned. I've been playing around with a lot of different things. Some of these decks are just playing around with stuff. Some of them, I'm just updating my old decks into the Nilfgaard kind of archetype. I mean, the Nilfgaard patch archetype, okay? So first one would obviously be the Wild Hunt deck. This is an update of my the deck that I made a few days ago. I mean, like a week or so ago. So the most important things is you can see that it's got Nil, uh, Nithral and Operator and Azure's Thunder. Those are all familiar cards that were in the original Wild Hunt deck. But the new ones would be the old Spear Tip, the Blizzard Potions, the Quen Sign, and the Impenetrable Fog. The Impenetrable Fog in this deck is a targeted card to the Clan Tursok Axemen um, because they're all on the range row. They're not weather um, immune. You put that on the range row, then they go back down to one. Now, if they remove the uh, weather somehow, you know, tough luck, I guess. Uh, you can obviously take out Operator and put in a Dimeridium Bomb to solve that situation. Operator's in there right now because I think Operator and Nithral are really awesome together. Caretaker's good. Um, another option for some of your bronze cards is Griffins. Griffins are a targeted card against Queen's Guard. Queen's Guards are very popular right now. So if you uh, play, one of the funniest things I did with uh, Griffins was I used, uh, there they are. I played two Griffins and then a Caretaker. I took their entire Queen's Guard from their graveyard um, after I killed them. And then I re brought them all back to the field with Caretaker. So Griffin, Griffin, Caretaker, all the Queen's Guard. Now, how did I handle that? Apparently my opponent did not have a Priestess of Freya or a Revive card on the third round. Either they just drew terribly or discarded it all. I don't know. I think they got just really, really unlucky. But it was hilarious when that happened. Okay. Um... Outside of that, the important thing to think about here was this, is the wideness of the row. If you're, you're playing a really wide row like this is, then you're going to play things like Old Spear Tip. And Old Spear Tip is going to buff the entire row. It doesn't matter if your opponent doesn't have something there. It will affect the way they play sometimes. Uh, decks that have a lot of melee units would be like, or are going to have three melee units is the Queen's Guard deck. Obviously, it's going to have three or more. Uh, Squaytel will have three Elven Mercenaries often, right up in the front. Play Old Spear Tip, suddenly you've gotten a lot of value out of um, Spear Tip, and you buffed up your row a bunch. Uh, Quensign here is for experimenting purposes. You can play Quensign on your Wild Hunt Riders, you can play it on your Nithrals. If you copy Nithral and then play Quensign on it, then both Nithrals will get the Quensign, much like if you put a Thunderbolt Potion on them. Obviously, you're going to put the Quensign on them after you do the copying, because if you do it before you copy, bad things can happen. Definitely in this deck, I would experiment with taking out some of these cards and putting in First Light, just so that you can get deck thinning, more deck thinning. Decoy, while changed, also interacts interestingly with the monster passive. If you play decoy on your strong card, let's say you play Nithral first and you want to keep Nithral onto the last next round, you play decoy on him, and then he's suddenly going to be kept. On he's going to be the, your last card play because you know decoy makes you replay a card. It allows you to manipulate the monster passive. If that makes sense. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next deck. Obviously, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll talk to you about it. So now the next one is Tragistar's deck. Tragistar is a competitive player. This deck was originally ranked 
for rank 15 before the patch, I've changed a few of the cards. Most notably, I put in Blizzard Potion and Ragnarok. You can put in um, you can put in other golds. Golds were not really what were the win condition in this deck. Woodland Spirit's an option. It's very good to play Fog right now because there's so many Clan Tours Axemen. And uh, they can only remove weather so many times before they lose. If that makes sense. Because, yeah. And you have a Blizzard Potion in here just in case they either remove the weather immunity of your Ancient Foglets or have put weather immunity on some of their important cards. So, because it allows you to take, add or remove weather rem immunity from all instances of a card on the board. Okay, so this is Tragistars. This plays not so differently from the one I put in my previous video. Okay, our next deck is a Consume deck. I don't think Gales is actually all that good with Consume, so this is not the best deck out there. I don't think Consume is nearly as strong as people think it were thinking it would be, was going to be. Partly is, if you put something on a two-turn timer, it suddenly goes from being OP to mediocre. Yennefer the Conjurer would be mediocre if it had a two-turn timer. Um, the Lubricant would be decent, but not as OP it is, as it is right now. It's just generating too much power. It kind of guarantees you a win. You can force a win with Lubricant, and sometimes you can force a win with Yennefer. So this is my Consume Monster deck. If they play a Weather card, you can re-push buff up the row with Gales. Is the option I'm thinking of. Yeah. Gales is kind of like an anti dimeridium bomb. They nerf everything down, you buff it back up. Mostly you're going to be buffing up the Neckers over here. Other options is you got the Gontaro Dim stuff. Uh, we can definitely put take out Cleaver or uh, our dimeridium bomb. Let's take out our dimeridium bomb for now. I know dimeridium bomb is really strong. We could put in a decoy. Decoy isn't bad. You can use it on certain cards like the Catacan and Gontaro Dim. It also allows you to reset what your monster is going to be kept onto the next round, as we discussed earlier. So you can use that to kind of control your pa monster passive. You can also, yeah, replaying Giant Toad and um, Gontaro Dim is probably the main targets. You could also do it with the uh, old Spear Tip, but. The buffed base strength might not be all that great. So, this is pretty typical. I think you guys have all seen a consume monster deck in the Nilfgaard passage, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Now, what's the next thing we're going to go into? Uh, we've done monster, now we can move into Northern Realms. So, I think Northern Realms has gotten pretty strong in this patch. Bloody Baron is broken. Most notably, the Lubricant is broken. I don't know why. It's every turn. If it was every other turn, it buffs y your units by three every turn. Like, if it was every other turn, it would be, it wouldn't, it would be fine. Much like if Yennefer was every other turn, Yennefer would be fine. Not everybody would be playing both of these cards. But right now, these two cards are really kind of stupid. Um, again, I tried a lot of deck thinning. I think the uh, Foot Soldiers are pretty good. They're really good for thinning your deck, much like the Reaver Hunters are. I'm trying Vess and the Blue Strike Commandos and the Promotes. The Promotes kind of protect your investment that you got from the Lubricant. Again, though, you're still going to be weak to Dimeridium Bomb, which is annoying. Cleaver's in there as a pointed um, counter to some of the annoying things that we've been seeing. Uh... So, like, if somebody plays a Grave Hag, you can play Cleaver to stop it. If you die Meridian Bomb a Madman Lugos, then you can put Cleaver on it and stop him from doing stuff. You can use Cleaver to stop a Clan Turzok Axeman. You can use it to stop a Champion of Champions. It's just a really good counter card. So, 
The NR, oh, why am I using full test in that deck? I'm using full test because you can um, copy these units and they all buff each other regardless of where they are in your deck or in the field. So but, uh, copying these is pretty good. Also, you can copy some of the buffed unit. You're gonna get keep getting buffs from Bloody Baron and then you can just copy the biggest unit on the board to get a quick win. Full test is a little bit like Gales in that respect. Obviously, there are different ways you could have. I could have done this. I could have put Reaver Scouts instead uh, and Medics, and that would have been great. I put in First Light just in case my opponent has some weather. Oh, and the Quen Sign is there because there's a lot of muster cards. You play Quen Sign on one of the cards that are mustering, like the Foot Soldier. And they all get protected, the ones in your deck and the one in your hand. So, it's an easy way to protect yourself from, like, if your opponent plays a weather card that you can take it. If I were to change the this, this deck here a little bit, I would probably switch out the Vess and the three Blue Stripe Commandos. And put in Medics and other things. The Medics aren't that strong, but I think... Having a bunch of stuff on the board is good for this deck. Next thing we're going to do is Radovid. Radovid, I think, is going to be one of the stronger leaders in this meta. This is a... I tried to... I've been experimenting with machines. These are control-oriented machines. And I am put in the Siege Expert. So the Siege Expert has the potential of putting 15 points onto the board. If you have multiple Siege Experts, then, of course, you're going to put in a ton of points onto the board every time you put on a Ballista or a Trebuchet. These cards also help you proc off your Irises and Sabrina, Sabrinas. You have Operator, which will also help you copy one of these cards to get extra, extra value. We have our Bloody Baron, which again is a very broken card, and Yennefer, which is also I, more of a filler card, but it's also a really strong card. It's just, if you don't know what gold to put in your deck, Yennefer is good. <laughs> We got our Burning Roach, uh, more of just to help us get rid of annoying gold cards. We can use Quidani Sergeant to de-gold your opponent's Yennefer, or you could just use Radovid and get rid of it that way. Radovid is just an instant answer to a bunch of annoying things. The Ballistas can kill your opponent's botchling, uh, Lubricants, so that's great, because they remove three base strength from uh, a unit. They also synergize with the Siege Expert, of course. So this is my Train Bomb deck, but it's been updated for the Nilfgaard patch. I want to try a complete machine deck eventually, but I don't have enough Siege Experts yet. When I do get enough of them, they I'm obviously going to put in a ton of stuff for them. I'm going to make a machine deck, really. There are a lot of machines in Nilf, uh, Northern Realms. I almost said Nilfgaard. And I think that you guys should experiment with Radovid and Henselt with machines if you get a chance. So Henselts are value machines mostly. Yes, these ballistas do one damage. Everything time something's turned gold, but they're they're a bit bulkier than the other machines are in the game. Again, we have our Siege Expert. This time we're having some Reaver Scouts and Poor Infantry. The Poor Infantry don't all get buffed by Dandelion, which is some sad. But Dandelion here is mostly just to get a bunch of buff. You're going to have a really big board. Uh, I think that Dandelion is the card I want to drop, actually. So we're going to put in a... We're going to put in a... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, we want silver cards. Uh, decoy is good. Decoy is great. Um... What to put in here? Old Spear Tip, maybe. Uh, that would be four strength. No, Spear Tip's a monster card, isn't it? Yeah. We could put in a Neck Neck A. Yeah, the Neck A would be fine, right? Yeah, the Neck A would revive um, Margarita. It would be another way to do that, and it would revive Botchling. So they're both good. Uh, so 
I'm going to take out Dandelion just because Dandelion doesn't get enough value yet. If I was playing a Muster deck, I would put Dandelion in it. This is not a Muster deck. So, yeah. This is the... Uh, yeah, this is the car deck. I'm going to pull out the... Could I, should I pull out the poor infantry? Eh. So many options, really. We also have our... Uh, there's a lot of mustering in this deck. It's just not... It's not consistent enough for Dandelion, in my opinion. And I think Neneke is just stronger. So, I think this deck is almost good. Again, I put in my signature operator, which works great with Margarita. You assume you're not against another Henselt. So, Operator is pretty fine, in my opinion. So, that that is my uh, goldsmithing deck up, upgraded to Northern Realms. I think it's an okay deck. 